Look out. Footy's back. G'day, I'm Collingwood legend Damien Monkhurst. Wait, no, I'm not. I'm not that big or that ugly. Oh, come oh. on, Jim. I'm James Clements. That's right, the host of the AFL Today Show. Your new favourite one-stop shop for all things AFL footy. That's right. I'm joined, as always, by a couple of local dingai. That's right, dinguses. Uh, they might call themselves AFL experts. We just call them local footy enough. There's Alex Donnelly over there. Yeah, Jim, happy to be here just off of live stream, which was not great. We had a good time. The game wasn't great. We live had a good time. Live the live stream itself was yep. excellent. Yes, the game, not so much. But let's be honest, we found him. Now, <laughs> the man go. in between us, this is the first time since round two 2023 that all three of our teams have won. Get around it. It is also the first time that this man's team has won all year. It's the stats boy, <laughs> Lee McKellian. I've gone for enough mode, got the kid on, got the uh, Uniac, Davis Uniac top. There used to be my Andrew Swallow one. Got the scarf. Yeah, I'm mean, very, very excited, lad. It's been a great weekend. Uh, His you voice were, is nearly gone. Yeah, you were yeah it's, it's on the verge. It's on the verge. You were discovered underneath a pile of human just refuse. Yeah, uh, I'm taking this on off Saturday evening. Yeah. Sunday well, Sunday morning technically. Yeah, and then had to go straight into a T20 what? Pakistan India clash. Yeah, that was rough. Uh, some spicy kombuchas from Marcus yeah. definitely definitely helped. Very nice. All right, I tell you what, the, the uh, social media post, a uh, p- couple of people found that very funny. We did get a text. <laughs> I got a text message from one of our bosses going, do I need to be concerned? No. I was like, ah, he's fine. Hey, hey, what do you mean? Well, <laughs> either way, this is the AFL Today Show. Of course, we're going to wrap up all things from round 13. <laughs> it was a crackingly long, excellent week of footy. No overlap. Yes. This is also the best Love part. Thursday through Monday. This is, should just be our footy week. How do we not have this figured out? I'll get to that in vent sesh. But either way. <laughs> Get around the AFL Today Show across on, you know, the YouTube channel, the social channels, uh, and smash this across yep. on your podcast apps. Can you smell it, though? Footy's back. That's right. <laughs> Halfway through the season. Quick look from the weekend. Yeah. Got a couple of uh, interesting calls at the end of games, one of which the AFL went, yeah, we got that one wrong. We Mac knew. Andrew, did they Max say, King. Did they say they got no, just one wrong? Yeah, but they didn't one. say the other ones? Okay. Nope. Yo, holding the ball at the yeah, end. Yeah, that was, was clearly bit, holding the ball. Everyone, everyone knows guy. that. <laughs> bit stiff, that one, I thought. That was a bit stiff. Uh, Sicily. Sicily, Sicily. He got cleaned up and <laughs> went to Sicily, but it was actually Tazzy. Uh, late bump. We saw a few late bumps this week as well. Yeah. Saw a couple today that didn't get paid. No. And the beating consistent on that rule. So Tom Green bumped Sicily. As he kicked it. As he kicked it. Yeah. I, I don't know about that. It's not a free kick. Nah, I agree. I thought it was a bit late. <laughs> uh, otherwise, we had a really awesome run of results because this week we had some really close games. Lots of close starting games. Starting with that Richmond Adelaide game. Yeah. The Lions blew out the dogs, but then we had an awesome tight Hawks Giants game, an awesome tight North. Eagles game. Yeah. You can say tight. St. Awesome. Suns was not an awesome game, <laughs> no. but it was certainly tight. Geelong got up six goals on the Swans, and then the Swans came all the way back and won. Carlton kept Essen at arm's length uh, in a thrilling match on Sunday night, and then the Pies basically just went, get out of here, Melbourne, yeah. uh, <laughs> which was pretty fun. So... With all that in mind, was there anything else we need? Oh, we had the MND slide, of course, as well. Yeah. Big freeze, uh, yeah. You got the, the big freeze, there. which is very cool. And... In terms of other news, we have some big injuries to Petrarca, who had very clearly some sort of problem with his uh, ribs. Yep. Yeah, that was uh, bad. Nick Dacos hurt his ankle late. I and think I've, he'll be okay, yeah. Do you think? Or just because precautionary, I reckon. Just think? Obviously, they're the best player, so just keep him on us. Uh, when's their the round 15 buy? Uh, the Pies? Yes. Late buy, right? Yes. Yep. They're the last buy. So, interesting setup there for Dacos. Probably rest him next week. Oh, you think? Give him a couple of weeks. Maybe. I don't know. Who are they playing next week? Uh, North, big, big, big game. Is that my point, Stats Boy? <laughs> yeah, it is. It exactly. Is. <laughs> Could they beat them with the under-14 East Kether or mixed netball team? No, it's coming off a win, Jim. What are, you, what are you talking about? He's up and about. <laughs> Still don't need Holy Reed, man. Nah, don't need him. Anyway, any other injury news there, Alex, that you were looking uh, to? Not really. Any There was anything coming off it. Like Nick Blakey apparently went off with 17 different injuries late yesterday, and oh, everyone's really? like, it's a corky, it's his hip, it's his <laughs> ribs, and everyone's... John Lamar's just like, I don't know. He's a, be, be right. He's a lizard. He's a lizard. No, there was just a late race. He's like, <laughs> I'm going to jump on. A late race. I'm going to get the punt. <laughs> All right. Everyone's favorite thing, though, after the round, it's time for ladder check. After round 13 of the <laughs> AFL, we have the Sydney Swans 11 1. Oh. Very clearly on top of the ladder, ahead of the best team in the AFL. No, not Essendon. No. <laughs> Carlton are 9 and 4 in second. Um, 
the difference in percentage is hilarious because Sydney just keep belting teams. They're one forty eight. They lost two percent on the weekend though. How's it going? they? But it's. Uh, They've got one game in hand, and with the percentage, it feels like it's a four-game advantage rather than it yeah, being two. There's a lot of bad percentages just looking at the top yeah. six, isn't there? There really is. So Carlton are 109.8, but they are nine and four, so you'll take that. So they're 36 points. They're yep. two wins mm-hmm. behind Sydney, which is just chaos at this point of the Crazy. season. And a game ahead. Because they've yeah. actually Actually, yeah, and the game ahead, yeah. yeah. I didn't even think about that. Tough, tough gear. <laughs> Essendon. Talk about percentages. They're eight, four, and one after that loss on the weekend. They're in third still on thirty-four points because of the uh, Anzac Day draw. Yep. Their percentage is basically an even one hundred. It's pretty funny. Yeah, that's not amazing. good. That's not good for third. They've Port. scored a thousand and eighty-one points and let in a thousand and seventy-nine. Gross. Port <laughs> are eight and four. Yep. Feels right. Off the buy. Had the buy. Who cares? It's just their name just in that top four is like. I don't yeah, know. it shouldn't be. Someone either. said. This, someone someone said, said, "Is this the most fraudulent top yeah. four we've seen in a while?" Yeah. I, Take out the ladder leaders. It. Doesn't feel right. Maybe. Geelong, eight and five after a tough one in Sydney, of course. Lost then four of their last five. Mm. They have. Well, you sort five of, of their last six. Is it? Yeah, yeah it's five it's, of six because they yep. had the win. They, they lost win four in a row and then they just, won. Yeah, so they lost five of six. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> Collingwood, after their win today, seven, four, and two on 32 points as well, which is actually always fun because the two ties add up to a win. Yeah. Uh, but in sixth spot now, the Pies, seventh, Frio, heave ho, way to go with that one draw there on 30 points. Eight, the Greater Western Sydney Giants. They're seven and five. <laughs> uh, remarkably, they're remarkably, sliding. because they've played twelve games, having had the bye last week. Yeah. They're the only team that's seven and five. Very weird. Yes. Because you've got two seven and six teams: the Gold Coast Suns, who can't play beneath the twenty-eight oh, degree latitude. What are they doing? And the Melbourne Demons, who just can't play football well. Their percentage is a hundred point one. Well, you call of them not making finals. This is, this is uh, I'm we, starting to we lean towards your way. We now. just talked about this on the live stream with Al before we mm. signed off. It's like you're looking at the rest of their season, and you're probably only guarantee, guaranteeing four wins. Even those yeah. guarantees feel pretty sketchy. They are North and West Coast, two of them. West Coast exactly. have already beaten them. Yes, and yeah. North could beat them. Uh, wait, Maybe. Uh, no. Perhaps. We, if and, then, 10. and then I think one of them was like, yeah, they played uh, someone like GWS here and we gave them that one. Mm. The Bulldogs, after losing to the Lions, are 6-7. and seven. The line of demarcation still rules. They are yeah. 11th. <laughs> if you are better than the Dogs, you're a chance to play finals. If you are not, probably no chance. That includes the very sneakily okay mm. Hawthorne Hawks, who was 6-7 and seven as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, oh, wow. their percentage is 88.1. Yeah, they're point cooked. One. They're going to have to win a couple of extra games. Yep. Brisbane are 5-6-1. Uh, it's a tricky one. They've got a Thursday night footy game this week against the Thursday. Saints. Friday. Sorry. Friday. We wish they was Thursday. Uh, I'll talk about yeah. that in a sec. <laughs> Brisbane, 5, 6, and 1, 22 points. Uh, they are adrift of the eight. There's a sniff. But they're alive. Yep. There's Saints. they got the talent for it. 5 and 8. Probably not alive. Saints not alive. Adelaide. <laughs> Dead. Definitely Gone. not alive. Gone. Gone. 4, <laughs> 8, and 1. Gone, Skip. Matthew Nix is like, we're going to double down on what's gotten us here. It's like, you're four, eight, and one. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, what, yeah what's gotten them there? Three and ten of the West Coast Eagles. That was a tough loss on the weekend. Richmond, they got a win. Two and 11. And North, yes. they also won. We're back. Stats boy. Can make finals from I here. I can no longer actually do the, there is one remaining winless no, team no. in the AFL because your beloved North Melbourne Kangaroos won. I love how North actually posted to Michael Hibbert said on the podcast uh, that North aren't going to win a game. They clipped that up, just said, ha-ha, as the caption, and just posted Michael Hibbert saying that. So he caught that, Michael Hibbert. Tough scenes. <laughs> yeah, because he and his premiership medal care. Nice. Vince. <laughs> Alex wanted to have a crack at Braden Maynard and Collingwood fans cheering him to drown out the booze. Yep. It does seem weird. It was gross. It just Every seems team does that. People no, they bo- don't. I've, I've done that before. Braden Maynard quite literally ended Angus Brayshaw's footballing career uh, to the point where it's quite sad where he's not even around the football club at the moment because he can't quite deal with that. Yeah, yeah. it's taken and such it's an emotional like, toll. All right, we're getting deep now. Yeah. Go traveling. <laughs> but it's hey, also it's bad. Melbourne- I feel like you should boo that man. Hey, a, he's committed war crimes. B, he's Brandon Maynard. C, he ruined a guy's career. <laughs> Did he get suspended for it? Melbourne can boo him. Mm. That's it, fine. Yeah, Melbourne fans are allowed to boo him because you can go back to that incident no, I agree with how their him. season yeah. is directly going right now. But you're like, oh, it's weird that you I boo. didn't say that. Did I, I said that you can boo him. I said if I'm the opposition fan, I want to cheer my player on. But you're uh, cheering is, your player because he's I, a prick and a thug uh, and a fake tough guy who last week got I hammered by a 19 year old killer. Hey, we can't do that! You can't do that to Brayden Manor! It's not fair! Shut up! <laughs> it was funny. Sorry, Gerald. Because <laughs> all the Collingwood fans are like, yeah, but he's our scumbag. <laughs> yeah. 
It's like, okay, that's fine. That's, what, that's all there. the vibe. That's all the vibe. But mostly, mostly, I just want to say, Vent Sesh, I just love how the footy community, outside of all that, mm. Brain Amana, made out sucks. We all get it. Yep. yep. But how the community around AFL can get, you know, something like MND, an issue like MND, mm-hmm. and really just throw its weight behind it yep. and get everybody involved in trying to combat it, at least sort of taking on some of the responsibility behind it. Yep. And I want to see that idea of like social responsibility and power built on and expanded into way more areas and problems and stuff out there. Yep. Use footy for the power of good. I love this. Why not? Let's see it happen more. Like MND is great. You have uh, stuff like, you know, dream time and stuff like this. Like we should be, you don't have to like, you know, theme every round. No. But at the same time, stuff like this, you can do it on very small levels as well, I think, and build it out from there. It could almost be for specific games. So I just want to see the AFL lean into that a little bit more. But actually, mostly, how was that the last a- like AFL Thursday night footy game? <laughs> oh, what are we doing here, even, gentlemen? It wasn't even good teams to watch. Either. And backing up a horrible Thursday night footy game mm. where you had Richmond. Yeah. Richmond, Adelaide. Beating Adelaide in yeah. Adelaide. This Friday, oh, the gem in the AFL's broadcast crown. We have Lions versus Saints. Yeah. Great. You could have Bulldogs Frio Thursday. That would be uh, a decent game. How do you – look? But just look at the fixture. There's overlap. Of course. Is there overlap with six games? So oh, the no, Vent Sesh. Oh, not next week. Oh, next the Vent Sesh, yeah. quite simply, is just like, AFL, next how week. have you cooked this so expertly? It's remarkable. Yep. I'm very angry at you. You should take a long, hard look at yourselves <laughs> in the mirror and go, wait, we should put Jim in charge. Right. <laughs> game wraps. Let's do some game wraps. Let's fly through this. Thursday, Adelaide lost to the Richmond Tigers. Hey, the Tigers aren't good, and they beat the Crows, who are also not good. 79-71, and the Crows absolutely stunk in this yep. game, Stats Boy. They did. They did. Uh, the Tigers, just a bit of quick ball movement. Jaden Short, your man in uh, Supercoach, finally fired up. I think he had 31 disposals. Yeah, I dropped him a million years I ago. Know, he's I been know. good ever since. He's been good ever since. Uh, Noah Bolter uh, has to stay in defense. So he's been swapping and changing from forward, back, forward, back, because we've had so many injuries. He was amazing. 20 disposals, 12 marks. I just had to had to pencil him in there because... He had some words for the camera as well. Did he? Oh, yeah. yeah. He, was, he wasn't happy with he something. He was yeah. so angry. I'm yeah. like... He's an angry man. Wow. Yeah. That was, was a bit strange. It was wasn't very it? odd. Yeah. But yeah, Adelaide just that is another classic loss this year. Last two years, they've just lost to a lot of really bad teams. So they lose Crouch, right? And you're like, yeah, cool. He's not a wildly effective nah. ball user. There is something to be said for ball winning. Yeah, a little it bit wins of clearances. Yeah. And it's like just having the ball in your possession is sometimes okay. Uh, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. But they were like fog sort of threatened for a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But oh, I called the big, oh, were, I was, I was up and about early thinking my <laughs> yeah. big fog game, $34 to kick five. I was like, let's go. And then he's like, oh, second half, I forgot how to play for me. Yep. And Adelaide, there's just, it seems like they're just uh, rife with problems from top to bottom. Yeah. And without Rankine out there, without, so no techs in that game, obviously. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dawson is still like what struggling after his like other thing, but had like got, a yeah. group, like plenty of the a lot of the he? touches, but yeah. him and Laird this year just haven't had impact at all. It's yeah. weird. Mm. So Adelaide bad, Richmond bad, but they won <laughs> Friday. The Bulldogs, Ugh. Western hey. Bulldogs. They uh, well, let's just check. Uh, nope, still the Bulldogs. <laughs> That's right. Ten goals, 11, 71, two. The Brisbane Lions, 17, 12, 114, As Eric the Hippie Hipwood goes. Whoopang and boots six, and then won't awesome. do it again for the rest of the year, the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> no, he might. He might How he many goes. times in 164 games has Eric Hipwood kicked f- more than four goals? Once, three, five. Oh, huh. that's pretty good. No, Got it's him. not. Nah, it's for not. someone who's paid about eight hundred thousand dollars a year to kick goals, <laughs> yeah, no, he hasn't had. He's he got got does very, this, but he does this once every twenty to thirty games, and you're just like. Oh, yeah, he's supposed to be And good. then he kicks yeah. twos and threes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, him and Danaher were awesome. They had eight goals and 17 score involvements just between the two of them. That was an awesome The effort. board, this game, you see the board, like, yeah, they, they're a team that desperately needs the bye, but it's also, we look good one week, yeah, and we're crap the next week. Yeah. It's the Western Bulldogs lifestyle. Yeah, it's not an idea no of like, oh, they definitely need the bye. It's like they every second week they have the bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they just don't show up every like, we second week. We don't have week. a bye this <laughs> uh, But Chalor, look, he had 30 touches a game. Neil was incredible. He had 38. He was amazing. It's just that weird sort of next level, like mm. where Libba came back and had some absolute Barry Crocker shockers yeah. in that game where he's like giving himself. away giving away freeze, mm. just turning the ball over left, right, and center. Um, McRae wasn't doing a giant amount. Bont was seemingly pretty he well. He got tagged by tagged uh, out of it. Jared Berry in the first half. Still so, actually did pretty well in the second half. Yeah. So pretty strange game, and the dogs just look inept. 
and yeah. their forward line where you're like, all right, cool. Well, Jamari, you go, Hagen, get up there and do you something. Just, yeah. like, I'll I'll try. And he shows these tiny little flashes. <laughs> yeah, third week the, in a row. Third exactly. week in a row. He's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, uh. Oh, oh, kick close, six. Close. Oh, I kicked two. Hmm. And you're like, yeah, this is not fun. Uh, Riley West got in there as well. Trelaw kicked like, what, the first goal of the game. And yeah, him like, and Dunkley kicked mistake. the first two. So weird. The podcast buddies. Uh, so that was bizarre. But either way, look, the dogs stink. They are still the line of demarcation. That's the Lions so just kept their season like on. Yeah, they might get a bit of confidence. Yeah, right? that's like mm. we talked about it last week. If they lost that game, it was just pack her up, boys. We're done. But it's like. There's a sniff. I wrote down here as well, Jim, about the latitude for the Lions. So I think they're ten and three now, and they last thirteen at Marvel. So yeah, they better away from uh, that latitude line. No, like, what's the latitude <laughs> of the MCG stats guy? I don't know. We should have found figured that out because <laughs> well, they didn't a, play the MCG. Oh, yeah, but it play. ties in. Yeah, it could true. be the exact same lo- that's, latitude. That's a very well, it's point. not going to be the exact It'll, same. No, it might it's be mm, slightly it's different. Be very yeah. slightly I'll actually different. have a look because they're not built in a straight line. I don't even know from each other. So oh, there we go. Thirty. Yeah, it's slightly different. Slightly different. Yeah, there we go. Saturday, we go to the Apple Isle, where Hawthorne James outlasted GWS Giants, 85-79. What do I always say on this show? Never trust anyone who says, what do I always say? Because they're absolutely 100% a flog. But one of our often <coughs> visited phrases, weird things happen in Tassie. Yeah. Yep. Like Hawthorne beating GWS. That was weird. <laughs> Toby Green was wearing a helmet. That was funny. He looked like Darcy Jones. I was like, the, 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 two Darcy Jones the kid there? that wears the helmet for GWS Darcy going to search, like, hey, don't get comfortable. Yeah. That's mine. Did he steal it off Darcy Jones? Like, he might have actually just stolen it. In his lunch money and he's, he's just like <laughs> hiding him, hiding him against the lockers. Darcy Jones is pretty small. He just picked <laughs> yeah. him up and it all fell off. Uh, but Toby Green had a cut on, cut on his head, right? Didn't yes. get a free so, kick for it, by the way. Just throwing it out there. Chucks the helmet on, which is pretty cool. Uh, strange game. Hawks look good. Hmm. Also look bad, but then look good. That's how they've been playing the last six weeks. Five of their last six they've won, and they should have won that that one they lost against. So Port. there is like a correlation. As soon, literally as soon as Will Day came back, yeah. they've been he's good, been he's been awesome. Right? Yeah. So uh, take us through some stats, stats boy. Well, you just mentioned game. Will Day. I was just going to talk about oh, some good. best play. Twenty six disposals, ten tackles. Like oh. a lot of there's a lot of midfielders right now. I think Tom Grant had one tackle, so they were on each other, and that's not good that's for the, him. That's the difference between that type of game. You need those tackles in the midfield, and uh, like you say about Carlton, sometimes they need those tackles. And Will Day's yeah. been awesome. Finn Callahan, Alex is made for the uh, All Australian, very All Australian good. and handsome <laughs> dude list. Yeah, twenty eight disposal. He was awesome as well. Two points. Uh, Lockie Whitfield had thirty in this one too. Brent yeah. Daniels is up and about. But this is the thing. Like D'Ambrosio was really, really effective in this game, just popping up left, right, and soon. It's like pick what up. a great pickup. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but <clears throat> GWS had it was like I think seven of the top ten ball winners right on this in yeah. terms of disposal. But this is like the Western Bulldogs. They exactly. do that. And they're like, not as effective. Not, some, like cares. Whitfield can be a It's a lot of dudes just kicking to a big There's, contest. You're like, this is gross. I what are don't you doing? know what's missing at the moment, but it's just... Uh, Josh Kelly, yeah, uh, but Stephen Coniglio. No, but it's Tom Green's impact. He has, yeah. He's dropped off massively when he was playing. Like, well. they've Jesse still, got, still got more than enough guys to win this game. Yeah. But there's just, there's no spark. Yeah. It's right. because, I don't know, that you... Form is off. You sort of take away those sort of top level performers and it means Tom Green's only having to doing, and Whitfield obviously having to do a lot more. Yeah. And it just limits their impact because you don't have like two extra kind of dudes in the middle anyway. And they can't get anywhere near 100 points anymore when they could. Every, but also the Hawks. The they Hawks. Rule. They're awesome. Come on. Connor McDonald out there cracking Finals. it. Jack Gunson <laughs> kicking goals. Uh, maybe or Chol. Uh, you had CJ as well. And. Uh, Oh, yeah. you're gonna, yeah. Great job, everybody, with the uh, commentary. Yeah, the commentary was bad. This also, g- also, w- hold on, we didn't mention it. The Guernsey clash in the in the sun. Like, why didn't the GWS wear the charcoal? Yeah, that was a bit weird. Yeah, but also charcoal Fox Footy send your commentators to the ground. We'll get they to that later. There. They were there. No, they weren't. It was definitely like because they were talking uh, how Moon was like stuck at Hobart Airport because yes. they were flying in. He w- <laughs> he was stuck, but they were in a studio in Melbourne calling the game. Oh, okay. So why was he going there? Boundary rider. Boundary rider. Oh, so he was yeah. going there just to ride the boundary as yeah. they called it from the studio. Yes. Yeah. He's just there. That's, by what they do, that's what they do with Lynchy with they the games in sometimes. Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah. The games in Adelaide is just for shooter. Yep. After a few tents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the hill. <laughs> Great job by Hawthorne, though. Yeah. They're flying. They look good. Sam Mitchell, how, good job. How far are they out of the eight? Just like two games. Well, game and percentage. One game, but the percentage is their percentage, cool. It's two games. Their yep. percentage is so bad. Yep. Hey, North Melbourne beat West Coast. All right. 74, yes. 65. Uh, do, do we give them a clap or Come like- on. We've got to clap, lads. 
you didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, your I cheered us on yeah. the whole way through. I was your so nervous. Your passion put them over the line, Stats Oh, boy. I was so nervous. Take us through it. Come on. Uh, I'm not going to uh, joke around. This was a horrible game. The first quarter. You're lucky West Coast forgot how to kick. Wasn't actually, it three goals 15 that they were on at some two point? 15. Two 15. Two 15 at one point. So that obviously helped it. I'm going to get into that later of uh, just teams annoying me. AFL footy players can't kick straight at the moment. And Alex was talking about people are in, getting in routines and things like that. A lot of West Coast players need a routine. That Jack Darling has a routine and the other guys don't. Oscar Allen, they're obviously missing. Uh, North, they lost their streak of the only team to kick a goal every quarter this year. We are How in, are you the only team? We're the only team. That's, so that was this stat that everyone, every oh, North fan right, was holding the hat on. Kick a goal in the first we didn't quarter. kick a goal finally in a quarter and we actually won a game. Suva was awesome. Obviously, Jim loves a bit of Suva. Did you put any money on Suva in this one? I did have money on Ooh, Suva. Oh, okay. There you go. How'd you go? Five, kick six. Five, oh, to kick six and he's kicked five. And he didn't touch it in the last quarter. No, that's very, yeah, very stiff. Obviously, West Coast, yeah, horrible set shots. Simpkin, he's back. He's finally back. Best game of the year. He's got, he had disposals, he two goals. a game winner, right? Game winner. He cooked a really good goal from outside 50 earlier. Yo was awesome. Uh, yo. Oh, yo. Uh, yo. 23 <laughs> disposals, one goal. He Gerald, was great. tell him to stop. I can't <laughs> stop. We, uh, North did crap the bed uh, in the last quarter. They kicked five goals in a row, I'm pretty sure. Uh, or it might have been six goals in a row. West Coast. Yeah, and I was like, all right, we're was. done. We got a free kick. Then we got another goal, and it was just, yeah, happy days. Yeah, your mate, um, Kurt, Curtis Jones, whatever his name was. Curtis Taylor. Curtis. No, the guy that kicked the goal, the sealer Paul with 30 Curtis. seconds. Paul, Paul Curtis. Curtis. Oh, right. Yeah. I was like, you yeah. like just running Tony yeah. Curtis. Yeah, yeah Paul <laughs> Curtis. He, he's, yeah. He's, so he's, he's so agile. You called it on the Thursday that he'd have an impact. Well, he kicked the sealer. I so. said he kicked four. He got one, so, yeah. and we won. So. That's a percentage Taylor. of four. Yeah. I was hoping the J train would kick six and Subaru would kick six and we'd have just like an awesome, horrible team How forwards could, off. Yeah. And J was Train almost, wasn't doing anything, no. and then got going in the last quarter. I'm like, we're on here. We're on. This <laughs> Actually, Suva awesome. kicked four in a row. Is what four got four yeah. straight done? Didn't give me that last one. You guys anyway. both suck. Anyway, they great suck. weekend. Great weekend of footy. We're, also, we're, we're finally back. I heard a commentator called Jamie Cripps the little master, and I nearly crashed my car. Gary Ablett is the only little master. Like, whoever that was, I can't remember what I was listening to, but I nearly like had a pile up on uh, whatever road I was on at the time. It wasn't great. High Street. Okay, don't. Drive your car into a tree <laughs> just because of commentators. I'm just no, but hearing like, oh, Jamie Cripps, the little marshal, I'm like, what did I just hear? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Mummy, what happened to Daddy? Oh, he drove into a tree. Oh, well, he got killed by a driver who drove into a tree and then collapsed <laughs> the tree onto me <laughs> because he got angry at a commentator. <laughs> oh, Amazing. Well, funny little stat last one. I'm going, Wardlaw was 0 and 18 before that game. I thought it was he 0 and 19. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure I was 18. Oh, and he finally got a win. So, yeah. Happy days. North ends for the Warlord. Honestly, uh, they probably are not going to play well next week because they'll be partying all week. Finally got a win. <laughs> they, all right. they got let loose in Northbridge with Ben Cousins. <laughs> oh, maybe. Maybe chainsaws with Daniel Kerr. All right. Uh, 51 48. The Saints beat the Suns in a gross game. Horrible. It, oh. ugh, really? I have a stat. Okay. Go on. Four of the five lowest scoring games ever at Marvel Stadium. Like obviously involved with St Kilda. What's the correlation Ross. with that? Ross has been in charge. He, he ruins games of but footy. It, but Alex, that's been through, through two different iterations of Ross. Oh, it's like oh, so really? St Kilda before, before he before. went to Frio. <laughs> yes. now, yeah, so combat. two have been in each oh. iteration of Ross. And I bet you like the games after that are Frio when Frio played at Marvel when he that's was coaching gross. Frio. He's just an annoying coach. I think Frio might have been in one too. Anyway. Nice one. This game sucked. <laughs> I thought uh, we going to end it there. Stupid Sexy <laughs> Flanders was really good. He yep. just ran a mark here, what, 42 touches? No one was but, but that's great. You have 42 touches, but your team kicks 48 points. Like, yeah. I don't care about possessions. Have a bloody impact on the game rather than this crap chip chip around. Yeah. Actually take the game on. Yeah. Maybe a handball and try and break through the press that they're putting on you. You're smarter than that. You get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars in perfect conditions to try something, and you didn't. You are morons. Ross Lyon, you are ruining football. Oh, Sorry. No, he's got a, he's got a point. Stupid sexy Flanders on the Suns. Like, <laughs> yes, but also, yeah, that's what I mean, from the Suns. Dan Butler was uh, amazing. He finally he got was a couple of goals. Yeah, he three goals. finally <laughs> popped off after <laughs> being what, knocked over for three weeks. He was suspended, right, for three weeks? I also I reckon know. you did that down the wrong camera, by the way. I was looking down there. Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> Just I was, yelling at I was like, why is he going that way? But he had the king off, right? So he had the king off. They both kicked a couple of snags, and the rest of this game was horrible. So This sucked. It honestly sucked. Team it was I'd, an embarrassment to the game of it, AFL. It was, it was. And Australian game, North football. It's, I think it's more football. embarrassing to Gold Coast that obviously you know you're going to go into a game against Ross Lyon. It's going to be defensive. Yeah. And you still only scored 48. You, you, Dima has to have a plan against that. So, I know it. Very annoying. This is it. You can't, like, they're the Gold Coast frauds because 
They can't win outside. But home. it's also Below the out, it's literally the latitude line. It's twenty eight degrees. Yeah. You come down, they lose. But if you're a St Kilda fan, there is no way you can enjoy that. No, I, I it is a horrible yeah. existence. You have got perfect <laughs> conditions, and your team is kicking seven goals to win a game of football. It's not like it was pissing down, raining sideways. There's a roof. <laughs> There's a roof. There is no wind. Great for football, and you serve up that dross. It is pathetic. Should have opened the roof. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> that game sucked. Yeah. Good job, St. Kilda. All right. I'm, they I'm ready. They got I'm a ready. win at least. Uh, on Sunday, there was another game. I don't know. No need no, to talk no about this much. 82 Swans win. Uh, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Carlton beat the best team in the eight. Oh, I thought you were actually going to do <laughs> that. Was Back to, to it. Right. Dude, the Swans win was going to punch you. Sydney uh, 100% gave the Cats a six-goal handicap. Yeah, literally. Yeah, they're like, oh, we'll give them a head start. Uh, it's like, oh, we need to make this yeah. a challenge. <laughs> it's a 66-point turnaround yeah. for this game. Yeah, pretty we- remarkable. The Swans are pretty good at footy. Yes. Uh, Fox Footy just were very quick to let us know that they were absolutely all on the ground with their broadcast with Howie doing the walk from the uh, performance center to the oh, ground, along with David King. Oh, this is great. How good's footy? Oh, <laughs> I love this. Uh, but five goals to none in the opening quarter. It ended up being six goals to none to start off. But yep. Geelong... Everything was just going their way. Like there was a couple of bounces. The ball yeah. just landed up in Geelong hands. There was a great front and center from Bowers to kick a goal. Tyson Stengel hits that dribble. Stengel. like Stengel's goal was that you're just up like, there Mark, that's goal the wild. Mm. And then the holding the ball interpretation was very interesting in the first quarter. I thought. Yeah, it, no, it was there seemingly was few, didn't go both ways. Few, but, if he wants, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> Doesn't matter in the end. When the Swans finally kicked their first goal with eight minutes to go in the second quarter. They kicked 109 points in two and a bit quarters of footy. Oh, yeah, I actually wrote three quarters, but it wasn't three. No, it was like two and a third. Eight, eight yeah. minutes and 13 seconds to go, and Marty bombed that's, it. That's crazy. Uh, the average win for the Swans now is 36 points at the SCG this year. Brody Grundy absolutely dominated again at the SCG. It's We've been banging he on about loves, that all year. He loves it there. SCG yeah. super coach is probably a Grundy captain. Which I captain uh, Stats guy stat about Geelong players having under 30 disposals got blown apart. Yeah, well, they when they go under 30 disposals, they win. But it doesn't help when their highest was 23. Yeah. yeah. No, you're never going to win a game of footy and when your highest That's like through. Jeremy Cameron had 21 touches. But like as a neutral watching the game and you're seeing him take marks on the halfback flank or on the wing, you're like... We'd rather him up there, yeah. Doesn't doesn't really feel dangerous, does nah, it? No. Nah. Um, but Errol, Warner, Heaney, 90 disposals, five goals, 14 <laughs> clearances, 34 score, score involvements. That's pretty That big. is ridiculous. That's ridiculous, isn't <laughs> it? Like they just flicked the switch in that late in the second quarter and I was just like They're all gonna they all could win a brown though in at different teams. But then they're like, oh no, I'm gonna steal votes. This is them. the Josh could Kennedy they, quandary. Could they all tie? Each other. How, how cool would that be? That'd, That'd be so funny. That would, it's almost impossible, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and Marty Party was fantastic. I thought he was dangerous all day. Yep. A lot of clunks. The biggest thing for me was the 10 different goal scorers. Yeah. It came yeah, from all angles. There. It was absolute mm. chaos. But that's yeah. another win where the Swans have kicked over 100 points a point as well. There was a point where I think there was, they had had, so it was a 10 different goal scorers in the end. Yep. And I think there was a point where there was like They all eight, had two, I think. And they well. all had yeah. like one or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like, was this is just lot, nuts. I think I like six or seven And then had Papley two. kicking that banana on the run. was sort Papley of a Papley finally did something. I know he hasn't had to do much yeah. this year, but he finally did something. Kicking He's four. The best celebrator in the game still. Oh, yeah. He just runs off. It's very funny. I'd like to see what his sprint is like chasing a defender compared to when <laughs> he kicks a goal. What's faster like, on the, the GPS data? Yeah, we should Well, that's what they've got, right? Yeah. Papley's top speed is hit. When he kicks a goal, he celebrates. Yeah. But they've literally yeah. tracked it. It's like, yeah, I well, you know, it. it's, it's very awesome. funny. It's amazing. Uh, but Geelong, I thought Tanner Bruin was fantastic. Tanner Bruin was good. He's, He's been un- underrated this yeah, year. I and think. Yeah. Holmes was pretty good, and so was uh, Bose as well. They mm-hmm. both, they all played pretty well. Tom Stewart. Got oh, tagged out of the game by was, Jordan. He's done. He's not having. He's <laughs> been horrible this year for someone who's got five. What five All Australians? Yeah, it's a very high bar that he sets. Yeah, but, he uh, has been. Yeah, no one near his best. Anyway, Swan's good. Geelong, concerned. Really concerned. Very concerned. Yeah. Yeah, they've had a rough month and a half. Yeah, very rough. Well, after like at the start, they couldn't lose. <laughs> yeah, but that but that's also like you look at the fixture. The, yeah. yeah, you look at the fixture. It wasn't that strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's an interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> Carlton then beat the best team in the <laughs> AFL. Well, I was just waiting for Jim just to, yeah. He's just been brewing this Carlton thing, even though he didn't even tip his own team. I've got a thing on it. Uh, why would you tip your own team against the best team in the AFL, Stats Boy? <laughs> That's true. I've got a... That a, would just be silly not to a, tip a, your team against the best team in the AFL. Like, like, you can be the biggest fan in the world, but when you're playing the best team in the AFL, the Essendon You Bombers, trust the best team in the AFL. Oh, now you're, you're on it. Team. Oh, jeez. Yeah. You brainwashed uh, out. So, Thing about Essendon, obviously they've lost now to Gold Coast and Carlton in, in consecutive weeks. Their wins this season have been against 18th, 17th, 16th, 15th, 14th, 11th, and 7th. That was of this morning, so the latter positions have you changed a bit. You can only beat who's in front of you, Alex. <laughs> They're the best team in the AFL. I mean, they've, be- I they've beaten the bottom five teams. Yeah, that's pretty average. 
Carlton now, I believe, have eight wins against teams that were in the top four. Yeah, you guys, you guys have been really good. The Swans are unbeaten against teams in the top eight. <coughs> nice. I'm just saying, we've yep. been. <laughs> Not bad. 96 to 70, the Carlton Blues win. This was a uh, really fun game. Mm, uh, for the simple fact for Carlton that fans. Carlton <laughs> didn't give us all the heart attack that we no. basically expected. Uh, the most important aspect of this game was it didn't really involve Charlie, Harry, Warper, and Cripper going yeah. absolutely ballistic. That yeah. was the big thing for me. Walsh was, and Crisp only having... It was Hewitt. It was a bit of Blakers. That's what you guys have uh, needed the last five Zach years. Zach Williams. <laughs> it was Elijah Hollins kicking three goals. Yep. It was like... That was all the – but the biggest thing for me was De Koning. Just He was absolutely unreal in the middle by himself that, that again. That stat once again just – Solo rocking. Solo yeah. rock. Keep him keep him. Solo. Jim's going to keep yelling about it. Solo rocking. Uh, Newman was really good behind the ball as well, like, which is really important, I think, when it comes to Essendon, right? You just need that marshal back there between he and Weeders. Like, there was yeah. like types of – was it Nick Cox, uh, Nick Martin, and there was like one at least one other Essendon forward – who kept threatening just to absolutely blow Wealthy? the game open. Perkins? It might have been Perkins. So they basically, they, they were very inaccurate in front of goal, were the Essendon bomb rays. They were. Uh, which it was much, two weeks in a row, much to it? their detriment, right? And so between Cox, he goes one on one. Uh, Archie Perkins kicks a point. Setterfield misses as well. Colwell kicked a couple of points. Langford kicked a couple of points. Didn't even kick a goal. Mm. And Nick Martin went two and two. So, so after Essendon earlier in the season, winning games that expected score expected them to lose. Yeah. They are now losing games that expected like score expected yeah, them like to that's, win. That's, that's the other. Hello the to other Max one, Lawton. The other one was anyone who has Langford in their all Australian team, take him out. He is the biggest. He just oh. goes well against the low teams. He's ne- when he when he has a good defender on him. He's never going to be all Australian. This is stats greatest. Yep. yep, down the camera. Can't stand how people think uh, Langford's having a really good season. He's kicked a lot of goals, but against, against low teams. captain of the handsome team, though. Yeah, he can be so the handsome team. Yeah. The biggest thing mustache. here was that Essendon had like, the time in their forward 50 of like 67% or something. Yeah. Uh, Carlton wildly more effective going in. 15, yeah. 6 to 9 goals, 16. Uh, and just their sheer effectiveness across the ground. They were just better with the ball. And I think just the structure that Zach Williams gives them, just that extra little... Ball user on the ground up forward and at least on the half forward flanks. God, crumble. he makes a difference. Mm. So it's the same with the Jack Martin. Can Carole Jack Martin get in? He might actually keep he Jack Martin out of the game. Like, no, really, you, 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 need, you need two of them in a team. Yeah, in that back. So as, I was, as I was saying, right, like Nick Newman was massive and mm-hmm. he and Weeders uh, without obviously Doherty there, but having Saad just back, McGovern back. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it just makes a big difference when your defense can at least make a big comp, like Brody Kemp, Fogarty and stuff, like making a big difference out down there and make those dudes like Cox and Perkins work a little bit harder for just those, you know, rubbish goals that they just pick up out mm. of nowhere. So it was pretty good. And up front, Elijah Hollins was a gun. It was yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it was awesome. Cripps and Walsh, this is a weird one. Is them getting less touches good for your forward entries? As because long as they're more effective. There, there was a few they? of your clearances where uh, Walsh sometimes just blazes away and bombs it. A lot of your forward entries were just flat and you, you can easily take a mark or easily crumb it rather yeah. than these big forward uh, entry bombs. Yeah. So yeah, it actually helped a little bit. It's the sort of idea, right, of like, mm. Uh, when you have Hewitt, Kennedy, stuff like that, sort of getting it into a yeah. Charlie or a Harry, it makes a big difference. Yeah. So that was fun. It was a fun win. You had the squid hat on. on the, I the, did have the squid hat on. That was a funny video. <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? The best part was it was the second video. I actually had the countdown, but I'd turned the camera around the wrong way. And it, was just, it was zoomed in basically like this. It, it was like the world's most boomer video you could ever imagine. <laughs> you should have posted it that. So Can good. we see that? Is I should have actually. Is, well, I do you still have it on your phone? Oh, Because I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. And then quickly he like got it back up. That's funny. That's funny. And Carlton <laughs> moved to second on the ladder. And today, Collingwood ran right over the top of the Melbourne Demons because they're bad. They <laughs> suck. 89-51 in the end, uh, and that sort of actually flatters the Demons because yep. it wasn't even really that close. No, They no. had four goals basically at the they end. They had a lot then, of scoring shots there. They had more. They kicked Six four out in the full. But yeah. So yeah. a couple of posters that were the points post. Just Rue don't. kicks three goals of the he six. He was good. Two, he was great. It was mm. a two for Cozzy as well. Yeah. Uh, but the fun thing for the Pies, I guess, they look at this game and go, we won this without Dacos doing much. Yeah. Josh Dacos was really good. Uh, yeah. But Kruger goes up and like pops the up. And goes, I loved him. It was this great. Is, What's yeah. the guy from Seinfeld? There's a guy from Seinfeld. Uh, Kruger, isn't it? The, uh, Kruger. The boss. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's like yeah, that's George's what boss. Or yeah, 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 he just reminded me of that. Yeah. Yeah. Kruger National or something. Yeah. Uh, Harvey it's Harrison kicked three. You believe it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Will Hoskin Elliott popped up for two goals he as well. He was great. Mm. They were just like everywhere. Josh Takos had 34 touches in the end. It was a quintessential Collingwood performance from the last 18 months where the lesser dudes 
bobbed up and had really good. Crisp was awesome. You Noble had 24. Crisp was really he good, as mentioned, on, think, 27. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steel Sidebottom took a great snag. How was threatening to take every sort of hanger under the uh, yeah. under the sun. Yeah. It was just a really good all-round win. They Like, Clary Oliver, so they had 28 touches in the end. Bailey Fritch had 17. How many handballs do you play off? Clary so like has nine and 19. 19. Yeah, 19 he always, oh, he always so. has more handballs. But, but the big thing, obviously, is Petrarca and Dacos, which sort yeah. of changes the outlook for both these teams, depending on how brutal the Dacos one was. He sort of tried to run mm. it off, and then they sat him late for the sub. Petrarca copped a massive knee to the ribs, very clearly that broke some bad. ribs, tried and to he, play through it. It looked fine. What, it what drugs bizarre. did they give him to bring him back out? Yeah, like a like, like, um, on the whistle, and away you go. Yeah, what, yeah, what was we love there? a green whistle. Either way, 89-51, out of the vibes from this game. We've literally just sat there and talked about this game live. You guys yeah. have talked about it a lot. I, I, I wanted to mention Gorney. He was awesome. You can't, yeah, put put their loss on uh, him. A lot of their Salem losses. Salem was really good too. Salem yep. was good. Yeah, he's balls he everywhere. Yeah, but he doesn't defend. But it's just their <laughs> forward line. Rue kicks a couple of goals, yep. and then Cozzy popped up for two. Fritch mm. popped up for two late as well, right? Oh, no, he missed that last one. So mm. Junk time, Fritch. They just <laughs> stink. Oh, like, they're, they're, yeah. It's they're, just, they're going to miss they the finals. They should be doing a lot better, and I think you mentioned on the live stream, they don't look fit. Like last week, same. They just looked so slow and tired, and not at the AFL no, standard. At the moment. No, I didn't say they didn't look well, fit. I, I, think, just, I think that. Yeah. There's just no. There's no dash. There's no run. Yeah. There's no. There's no dare from any of them. And yeah. it's like Different you've to got. Last year, they're yeah. also aging. So I think their list is very close to teetering as to where, where Richmond's is heading Ooh, okay. and where West Coast currently are. They are very close to that. Like if if Max and Petrarca go down, they are cooked. Yeah. And that's a big if, obviously, but Petrarca is, has gone down now. So. Yeah, well, yeah, first time in 146 games, yep. I might miss. Either way, good win for the Pies. King's birthday. Awesome win. They're they ba- yeah, like bounce back after the loss to the Bulldogs. Like That's an extra win that they... With f- all their injuries, this is yeah, that's, that's they were the outside, win, yeah. And they were the outsider going into this game. It was a big betting move for Melbourne wow. this morning. I did so, 75 favourites by the end, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, 75 So it's a good win that, for yeah. Collingwood. It's... You know, they're, they're going to back themselves to sneak into the top four given how even this season is. Absolutely. Tipping results. Oh, Jim doesn't want to talk about this. <laughs> I didn't, I, the, bit, the worst part is I didn't galaxy brain myself into any actual correct picks this week. I got one. so uh, <laughs> That's hard to do, honestly. It's ridiculous. I mean, I only got three. I threaded the needles. I got, oh, we, those, those, got me over those, the line, lads. Those three results on Saturday all went against me. They go that way. What, you get four, I get six. Mm. Yeah. Tough one. North in WA. Actually, I didn't say Again, that. And this but, gets me for tipping the Western Bulldogs, like honestly. I didn't say that about North. One, three of our last four in WA. Should we just move there? North specialist. You yeah. actually probably should. Well, you probably should probably there. merge with West Coast. We actually Coast have a lot of fans over there. because And be called the North West Coast Eagles. I'm honestly happy with that. We win there. Yeah, there's like definitely like something north of West Coast that you just change your name to. Yeah. Just go to Broome. Who cares? <laughs> Broome. All right. The full north. credit to the boys. The best team of the round. I wanted to give this to Carlton, but we'll just give it to Sydney. Yep. Agreed. That was too good. They <laughs> spotted six goals they to Geelong. They went, uh, they literally, they're the <laughs> meme we're just leaning forward. All right, now I better pay attention. Yeah. That's just like, that's what they were. They just went, oh, all right, we'll actually turn it on now. 16 goals in two and a half quarters of football. Right? Head start. Mm. Stats boy. Uh, I got to be North. Yeah, we've absolutely smashed the powerhouse. Give, well, let's give him give, me, give me something. Give, give, give me one full, week, credit, one full credit. Full credit to, to the boys. boys. Full credit to the boys. Giving you the win. Thank you. Well Thank done. You. Yeah, we beat the powerhouse you, of West you're Coast. You're not going to be, well, the thing is, at least you've won a game. You're not well, going to be winless. Now I'm no. actually confident that we'll beat West Coast here. Which is which is pretty handy. So. Yeah. So we might have two wins. Harley Reid and we'll Tim Kelly might play Harley in the game. Two point oh. Uh, and Tim oh wait, Kelly. do we get Tim, do we get Harley Reid? No. no. Oh, why not? He play. No, yeah. I don't want him. Uh, <laughs> Sydney very on. clearly awesome. Carlton very good. Um, Brisbane Lions also very good. Big win. Yeah, I think so as well. They, they, were, they were underdogs them. as well. They were underdogs. Yeah, it was a good win Friday. Good. Yep. Best on ground of the week. Who wins your best on ground? Let's do the slide. Pat Raff. Oh. The M&D good. slide. Enjoy this. That was this. great, yeah. A bit akadaka. We were discussing this prior to the live stream. Did the ice bath look less cold to you this year? Yes. There was less. When they came out of it, they didn't look as cold. Yeah, It I, didn't look as deep either. Is that because Fags did his hammy a couple of years ago? Right. But he's also <laughs> 73. Yeah, he's pretty old, yeah. Like it did Jack, look less cold, yeah. Jack Rewald barely flinched. Uh, no, Nick, he didn't look happy. My mate out. said this, actually. Nick Nat cheated. He was pretty much wearing a wetsuit. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. That's like, smart. Smart, yeah. Like Selwood. Nick Nat lives in Perth. He doesn't want to do ice baths. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel true. like Selwood, it just takes so long for anything to reach his brain synapses now. <laughs> they're just like, oh, I'm cold. He's, it's, it's like Homer. So, uh, something said something. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> You're still here? Get the hell out. <laughs> uh, Pat Rafa, though, looked the best next to uh, Aaron, Aaron Phillips. Aaron Phillips. Right. Aaron she looked Phillips exactly like pink. That was, that was pretty cool. Pat Rafa, like, literally hiding in the crowd as Brian yeah. Johnson was pretty awesome. It was so weird at the start, but then he, it was pretty fun. That- Tim Watson, can we not let him host those again? He, he made it a bit awkward, yeah. Sh- Shocking. Yeah, he made it a bit Oh, awkward. God. Brian so, Taylor, though. BT's wasn't. got like 87 different scripts he was, he was already good, yeah. like written down
Can Mr. Say, Bright Slide. Can, can you please say... Yeah, he let, forgot who... Sorry. Can you please let him say, uh, let let him entertain you one more time? <laughs> he literally, he said it eight times. He's, eight. He gets stuck on a loop sometimes, BT. It's like just, you need to turn him off. It was like Joel Selwood's loop that a couple just of weeks ago. Just turn off the yeah. yeah. job. I should be in front of you. Turn it on and off again. <laughs> you know you gotta, give me a BT. Have you reset your <laughs> BT lately? <laughs> anyway. Joel Selwood was Iris. Other one. Best on ground of the week. Whoa, Errol, 37 touches and a big snag. He was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like, what an absolute that was weapon. Awesome. We, we talked about it last week here in the office that post buy it feels like Errol's worked his way into the year and his post buy has just gone, hey, remember me? Mm. Love that. Uh, I did want to give it to, like, I don't know, a Carlton player. <laughs> there was, it was so it spread was out. So spread out. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Like, George Hewitt looked great. That's yeah. a good problem. Uh, well, Errol, though, he was just incredible. I was watching that game just going, this is wicked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is so good. Uh, anyway, stats boy. Uh, power forwards getting goals. We love that on this show. Eric Kipwood, career high six goals, career high 20 disposals. Had to give it to him. And then a sneaky shout out to Suva kicking five. I just yeah. love, love seeing good guys kick more than five goals, kick it back. So got to be uh, Hipwood. That's probably his... Is his best game of his career? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. So, that awesome. in that Melbourne... I know he only kicked four yeah, in that Melbourne but final, but that, that I, I well. in a final it feels better. Yeah. Yep. Awesome by Alex. Him. Brady Grundy, 25 touches with 21 of them contested for oh. 34 hitouts. What a beast. He, even when the Swans were getting like beat in the first quarter and a half, he was still killing it in the center. And then once they got on top, it's like, oh, Heaney, bang. Oh, Chad, bang. Like, there was just hitouts. <laughs> like, I should have found the score involved. I think it was 11. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, mate, no mates. Uh, who's got no mates this week? Kosher Deer for uh, yeah. nearly spoiling the West Coast, uh, the Hawks win by touching. It's a great name. Touching the snag. Who was it who kicked oh, it? Oh, I can't remember who kicked it either. Oh, but God, I, know you, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. But touched it, literally, it was a goal. Late, yeah. And we're still going. And like, just touched it before it crossed the line. You're like, oh, that's bad. They're lucky that they what won. What are you doing? Yeah. They, still, <laughs> they would just held on to win because yeah. uh, that would have been the worst. Because uh, I think they also got stuck in Tassie ex- overnight. Right? Oh, so they? They, yeah. They had to get a Jay bus. Sicily would have been mad. He would have been punching <laughs> walls. So he's got to be old mate. But no, they, had to, they had to go to Hobart. They had to go to oh. Hobart, wait a night, and then fly oh. out the next day. So you know that that bus oh, ride from Launceston to Hobart would have sucked if James they had punching wall. You already got Sicily losing it because he's stuck in Tassie. Going, <laughs> I hate being in Tassie. <laughs> it's the worst and so green and nice and cold and clear and the booze is good and I hate it so much. And you're like, would you just settle down, sis? Gerald, write that down for a clip. How did that Mate, keep going? <laughs> what are you doing? And he's just losing. Just imagine like the repairs he's he has to do it. to his hotel room. Like Uh-oh. that's what it, it just would have kept going off the bus. Anyway, <laughs> so there's some old mate nomads. Uh, Matthew Nix is also an honourable mention for me oh, because yeah. he is copping it left, right, and centre oh. there for the Crows, and rightly so because his team is bad. Can yep. we look at their Mostly. recruiting department too? Yeah, the recruiting department. We talked about this we in the live whole, streams. Like they, they're just like Harrison Petty. Here's all the money. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> oh, that's a bullet dodge. Yeah. Oh, God. The fans we, in the t- in t- on the TikTok were uh, yeah not happy with us. Oh, yeah. The Adelaide fans were not happy. Yeah. <laughs> Prove us wrong. Prove us wrong. Prove us wrong. Wait, you lost to Richmond. Uh, the Swans lost to Richmond too. I can't talk. <laughs> anyway, stats boy, old mate, no mates. Uh, i got to be Dimmer. Since mentioning that he hates Marvel Stadium, he hates going there, seven losses and one draw. Can I also point out one of them was to the Gold Coast? One of them was to the Gold Coast, which is pretty funny. They never win there either. Sorry so. to everyone yelling at me. Sorry, it was to Gold Coast. Yeah. Not, I see people go, stop calling him the Gold Coast. Stop calling him the West Coast. <laughs> My bad. The Gold Coast. Uh, but, yeah, Dimmer's obviously taken this, this bad aura from Richmond. Gone, guys, we hate playing at Marvel. I you so. said aura. I'd say stank. Yeah. yeah stank. <laughs> I tell you I what he needs. I've ever He's up on the Gold Coast. Hit up some of those asshole influencers and get some sage and just start <laughs> waving it everywhere just you go. Kyrie Irving won't be doing too much after. Get the next some bone broth. NBA. Whatever everyone else up there says. Yeah, got to be dim up. All right, old mate, no mates, Alex. The fans. We have no more Thursdays. Oh, that gets us into why I can't stand. No more Thursday night footy. Oh. This is still just re flipping ridiculous. How do we? I've now, this is a bit of an outback take house. Oh, God. I've now at least sort of flipped my entire thinking on this of like the AFL are too dumb to get out of their own way, right? Yeah. Or contraire. <laughs> are they holding Thursday night footy over the head of the broadcasters going, no, we know how popular this is. So next time we renegotiate our media Ooh. rights, 
we'll dangle some more Thursdays. Oh, we might just sell Thursdays to Apple. No, because we might sell Thursdays to Amazon. In, Whoa, in the, you it could be out. the could deal. The new deal starts next year, and there'll be Thursdays guaranteed for the first at least the first sixteen weeks. Okay, yeah, but they haven't guaranteed them all. Yeah. This is just them yeah. dangles. It could be. Give us that's dangles. The, sell the only... other, they'll sell the other. No, they haven't because they've already they've already sold they've already sold all the games to Fox and to Channel Seven. So the games have been sold. It doesn't say when they're going to be broadcast. Dangles. So yeah. Yeah, Jim's is still dangling. You're going to do does, dangles. He's got nothing to dangle. He doesn't basically. understand that every game's already sold. <laughs> all the games are sold, and it's up to the AFL when they're actually going to put them out there. Right. Just extra go, games. Right. Yeah. We're going to do the Thursdays. They're sitting there going, "We're not doing that. We're not going to schedule Thursdays." Till you pay more. Dangle, dangle, <laughs> they dangle, did. Dangle. They got more. They yeah. threatened to and go to Channel what? 10. Guess what? Next time it Imagine if the AFL up, ended up so on They're just going to keep holding this. Like the they're going to hold this over our heads. They go, oh, it's only 16. And you're like, can you give us 23? They're like, dangle, dangle, dangle. <laughs> 24. Dangle, 24. dangle, dangle. 24 weeks. Dangle. We'll do a round 0.1. Oh, <laughs> no. Dangle, 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 point dangle. Point three, point four. And you're like, here we go. Stop. Stop it, Jim. Andrew Gill and Dylan just dangle, dangle, dangle. <laughs> Off he goes. Stop saying dangle. <laughs> I'm just going to dangle, dangle, dangle this over your head. Also, we have too many browns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I heard, did you say that on the last? Or when yeah. did you say that? Yeah, I heard it somewhere. People Nathan, with the last name Brown for all those playing brownies. at home. Nathan, brownies to be Campbell. Good. And John O. We, we have a lot of Joneses many, as well. Too, too many, many Jones, yeah. Jonesies, Joneses, <laughs> John O's, and Brownies. Can we? <laughs> this goes back to one of my very first why I can't stands of this season. Too many nicknames. Nicknames. Yeah. Grow up and use names. Isn't that right, Stats Boy? Oh, it says you want, it says you want NBA Australia. <laughs> he just missed the joke. I know, I heard that. I'm literally the king of the nicknames. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> At the same time, I'm not a professional broadcaster yeah. yet. Uh, but no, no we? Thursday we Night Footy. For this. I'm pretty sure we are, yeah. Well, yeah, we did, I guess. We did <laughs> yeah. Thursday Night Footy, none of that is, is shocking. It's the worst short-sighted decision by the AFL ever. Yeah. And there is no amount of backtracking or back-talking that they can say that will justify it ever. You realise we're going to get like the first elimination final on a Thursday. That's what I said, regular yeah. season okay, football. Okay, that, that, yeah. that's handy list. So the regular season football. Yeah. Like, like finals are a completely different beast. But yeah, because they do need... Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah, yeah. Uh, Arvo, Saturday night. Yeah. My entire point that's is awesome. this week is perfect. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it, Sunday. How Monday. good No overlap. Work. We have five days of footy. Lovely. You get two days to decompress, back in. Let's go. <laughs> it's the best. Perfect. Prove me wrong. Yep. Alex. Commentator's not been at the ground. I'm yeah, honestly it's, sick of it. It like, is annoying, yeah. F- f- as we said, Fox Footy made the big show and dance about being at the SCG yesterday, and it was awesome. It was great because when the when the la- one of the last goals that the Swans got and Chad Warner's just sneaking out on the wing and and everyone could sort of see it at the ground because they could hear yeah. the chant, and then you just hear David King go, Chad's out, Chad's out. Yeah, and it was cool. Yeah. Whereas if you're in the studio and you're just watching the screen and you're seeing Logan McDonald and Amadi with the ball, you can't see Chad Warner. But if you're at the ground looking at the play, you can see this. Also, that I'm assuming calling the game in Tasmania off the screen would have sucked given the glare. Mm. Yeah, exactly, Also yeah. by the constant mistakes and, you know, yep. mixing it's up just players. Not professional. Calling yeah. it at yeah. the game, I reckon you would have been able to overcome that. But so also, it's next year that they're all, all always at the game. I think so, yes. I think the deal with Foxtel buying. So it's Foxtel, already, Foxtel yeah. owns Saturday from next year. Okay. So I think it's going to be like early afternoon. They're going to try and get like three to four games in. I don't know how they're going to do it, mm-hmm. but yeah, oh. all at the ground, which is great because that means Jim could be doing special comments next year. <laughs> could be. Will be. <laughs> Stats boy. Uh, just teams. Uh, not practicing enough goal kicking, I think. I, there's, there's two Need weeks in a row. protect our hammies. I don't know. I don't know if they are So because I don't go and watch the, the training session. Maybe I should go and inspect yeah, it. Go full enough. I might, I might go. have to go full you enough. And Suva, how many goals did you no, kick North, in training? North are the second most accurate team. We don't Love have that. as many shots, but because Suva just is a yeah, dead when, eye. When you kick at the yeah, goals yeah, eight yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you've only scored <laughs> well, I didn't really seven, want to say that. When you're the only team to have scored less than 800 points this season. Oh, it's been a good 800 though. Anyway, I just don't think teams are practicing enough. You got uh, was it Essendon two weeks in a row costing themselves. Oh, yes. uh, you got West Coast costing themselves. Just learn how to kick straight. Back in the day, everyone could. Oh, kick you straight. know, just be better and get the footy in there enough times to kick goals. Just yeah. kick straight up. Well, I mean, this is the thing. Like Essendon had a million chances and they completely yeah. bottled it. I don't yeah. know if they practice enough. I mean, they could just turn to me for a bit of goal kicking practice. I was out there as I mentioned earlier on the, sp- uh, the squids. <laughs> Dad could kick really far. Yeah, twenty five meters. If you're a five year old. Hey, what if it was two kicks to the G? <laughs> He's like, wow. I'm like, yeah. 
Check that out. <laughs> he's, and he's, hobbling, and he's hobbling back. <laughs> Dad, do a big one. Dad, how far was that? It was 60. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, it's, Dad kicked at 60. No, he didn't. The rabbits. <laughs> the backyard's on five metres. <laughs> Keep the rabbits out, <clears throat> uh, But there were two other blokes having a kick to kick on the other side. I'm like, don't look over there. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, the worst part is I'm like trying to impress the five-year-old. The eight to 20-month-old is just like, just off. And I'm like, there's a road over there somewhere. He's probably fine. <laughs> Check this one out. Boom. <laughs> How's that? How's the girl with taking of the marks? Is he scared of the footy or is he like committing? So the baby's actually better than the older one. Oh, no. Take oh. Mark, so. so we're working on that. Anyway, <laughs> he's just going to walk around corners in the house. Dad, bang, just throw something throw the at, footy him. at him. Yeah. <laughs> Super coach wash from a pretty tough week. Oh, I had a horrible, 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 disastrous week, especially with the uh, Nick Dacos captaincy week. decision. I was to- I was literally on the uh, live stream debating: mm. do we go Dacos? Do we go Gorn? Uh, landed on Dacos. I that was Gorn. a mistake. Gorn was incredible. Uh, but then it also means that you've got some pretty big injuries, obviously, with Petrarca. Yep. Whether or not Dacos is playing next week. Uh, is a big question mark, especially when you got buyers. Maybe you move on from Dacos. It is absolutely Stop. just gnarly. <clears throat> um, so Errol smashed it coming out this week. Brody Gundy was awesome this That week. was my big captaincy. Like, I switched that late. Grundy's a good call. I should have put it in our group chat. I'm, like, I'm going Grundy's captain. should have done that, yeah. Uh, Stupid Sexy Flanders was awesome as well, 152. Bodie Ullin at 157 for the Suns. Where Bacon. the hell did that come from? Even like if you, um, as a Roos fan, if you chucked it on the Sheezel, 129. Yeah, he's been, uh, the first couple of weeks he was in the midfield, uh, he looked yeah. off, and then the last three weeks he's been awesome. Dawson, Dawson ripped in the off. Air, one, yeah. 146, and Ooh. I'm to the point where I'm like, I'm going from Luke Jackson to Deconi. Let's Ooh. go. Oh. Jordan Love Dawson it. ripped off 117 in that loss. Yep. Oh, did Lockie Neal had an, another 134. Hmm. Uh, Yo had 127. Zach Fisher, 120. Zeret still managed 125 despite the Chincotta tag. Oh, I didn't even mention Alex Chincotta. I should have actually tagging, thought yeah. about <clears throat> him for uh, best on ground of the week because, God, he was good. And then hmm. kicked two goals in the fourth quarter that basically won them the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yep. was always everywhere. Yeah. And it's like that's such an underrated aspect of being a good footballer, just always being – there yeah when the ball is to be won and if you win the ball even better definitely uh in terms of the rookies there wasn't a t- i mean yeah. the big one was will dawson getting well, zero points i know i didn't bring him in uh, shoulder, yeah. so. sullivan 48 points with the break even of negative three got there in the end happy days the big ones for me were tom stewart and tom green both getting less than 80 Ugh. is a killer and tom green's been out of form tom stewart's been out of form the last tom six weeks much. i might have to get rid of stewart i think what did and ridley against the blues ended up on something. I didn't see what he finished on. <laughs> Good job. Because Nick Martin didn't do a great one either. Anyway, there you go. You can check out all of that on the official AFL Super Podcast. Ridley 112. There you go. Not bad. That'll be out tomorrow. But Dacos Petrarca is going to be the big story this week. That's it. AFL Today is done for round 13. Thank you to Alex and the Stats Boy. Thanks, Thank you. you. That was a big show. Good weekend. Big week. Fun times. Yeah. Uh, remember to smash across all the socials. Say us doing lots of fun stuff, uh, filling in your footy gaps. Face EIG, X, TikTok, YouTube, all the good stuff. You can check out the Cricket Today podcast, Football Today podcast, NBA Australia. Hold all tickets everywhere you get your podcasts. Get around all of them, like Diesel Williams getting behind a handball, a couple of Brownlows, and also getting behind Weeders. After the uh, game the other night, which is pretty fun. Just like, there's Diesel. G'day, Diesel. Hello. Hello, Diesel. <laughs> it was very fun. So there you go. That's it. We'll catch you for the Midweek Madness show on Wednesday for AFL Today. That's only in two days. That's weird. Yeah. Until then, look after yourselves. Remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, the AFL Today Show, to the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.